All right, so what I'm doing right here is I'm gonna make some jerky. I had some of this left over from the spring of the year and I was gonna just uh, share it with y'all and do a little YouTube thing on it. It had some meat. It's right here at the end of the summer. It's time to start, you know, we fix to start stocking it back up. And uh, a lot of the, the deer that I kill, like in Kentucky or Kansas or something, I leave it whole. And that way I can do this or I can cook it in the Instapot or something like that, or I can I can run it through tenderizer, which most of the time it don't need it. But uh, everything that we kill here in Alabama, it don't matter if it's a doe or a buck, it's so tough that you have to run it through a tenderizer or a cuber. The stuff that we're killing out west, you know, like oh, I say out west in Kansas and, and even up in Kentucky where they've got some grain, for some reason it's just a lot more tender and a lot, oh, a lot easier to prepare than it, this stuff that we've got around here. So that's why I left this a lot of this stuff whole so I can cook it in big, you know, like big neck roast and stuff like that. And, uh, and I could put it in that Instapot or, you know, crock pot or whatever. Anyway, I got a lot of this, I say a lot, I don't have a lot left over, but I've got a little bit left over. It's right here at the end of the summer. I'm fixing to uh, make jerky out of it. It's gonna make more room in my freezer because I'm, gonna, I'm fixing to put it in the smokehouse and put it back in vacuum seal bags and then I can refreeze it after, I, after I'm done smoking it, you know, making jerky out of it. But anyway, oh, we're gonna do it with this right here. It's got the instructions inside. Each little packet does like five pounds of meat. I think I got enough for about 20 pounds. We're gonna blow through this stuff right here, see if we can't get it smoked, and uh, that way it'll be taking up less room in the freezer and I can start restocking. But uh, anyway, they said it does it does turkey, uh, beef, deer, whatever. We're fixing to use deer. Uh, I'm gonna use some from Kansas and Kentucky. Anyway, y'all bear with me. I'm fixing to uh, slice this stuff up. They said make it like an eighth of an inch thick. I don't think it's gonna make any, any difference if you get a little bit thicker than that or a little thin or whatever. Let you see how I'm gonna do it. Anyway, you marinate it anywhere from eight to 24 hours in these packages. You just put it in like a big one gallon Ziploc bag, each five pounds, and, uh, and you put it in the refrigerator and marinate it overnight or, or whatever. And then maybe tomorrow morning, I can get that smokehouse busted off and we can get this stuff smoking. And mm, let me tell you, I've already done this already this year. It is incredible. But like I said, all it is is, uh, is some stuff from uh, from Bass Pro or Cabela's, whatever, same thing, I guess. Anyway, y'all bear with me. We fix to get this stuff going. All right, here we go. Now this is the this is the first the first batch. Okay, this is going to be the prime reel. And you see what I did. You don't have to have a vacuum sealer to do this. You know, one of those vacuum bag things. You don't have to have that a regular Ziploc or anything will work, they said on here. I just figured that this would speed up the process. If I put some pressure on it, some vacuum on it, it's going to push it through there a little bit faster. That way, maybe I can get this done tonight because I need to be I need to be on a tractor in the morning. Anyway, so what I did is I took the meat. I got a lot more to do, and I'm fixing to do it, too. Uh, but what I, I took that meat and I cut all the uh, the sinew off of it and I cut uh, all of the fat. You want to make sure you get the fat off of it because that fat's not going to work out good at all. Uh, you know, it's going it's to be oily, if you know what I mean. I mean, it, it would. I guess it would be okay, but uh, I would recommend cutting all the fat and all the sinew off of it because it's going to be pretty tough anyway. You leave that sinew on it, you know, that white skin stuff over that meat, it's going to be real tough. It just depends on what you want. If you want it to be uh, tender, you know, cut it cross grain. If you want it to be tougher, you know, cut it with the grain. That's what I recommend. You do not have to have all of this right here, people. You know, I grew up doing it just, you know, salt and pepper and cayenne pepper and making it hot and just, you know, that's that's just the way we did it. Uh, you don't have to have, you don't have to have these, you know, these, uh, these mixes to do it. We, we, like I say, we grew up doing it, you know, homemade style. But anyway, this is just making it easier and a little bit faster. Every now and then I wanna massage this thing a little bit, make sure we're getting it all the way through there that, because it's got a curing salt in there that will actually cure the meat. So it's not gonna hurt the, you know, work it around, make it, make sure you got it between, you know, when you stack meat, you wanna make sure it gets between the meat and all that right there, that way it can penetrate and go on through the meat. 
anyway, let's put that in the refrigerator and I'm going to carve up the rest of this stuff. And, uh, you know, it's probably more than five pounds, but I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference because it looks like I've got plenty of that, plenty of that mix in there. You see it, it's brown. Anyway, y'all bear with me. We're going to see if we can't get the rest of this stuff done, get it in the refrigerator, possibly get that smokehouse going. I don't know what time it is right now, but. Maybe you uh, maybe get it on here, you know, this afternoon or something. Late, later on this afternoon, maybe tonight. See if I can't get this stuff smoked today. I may have to do it in the morning. Depends on the weather and all that right there. So, anyway, y'all bear with me. All right. It's the next morning, so that meat, I let that meat marinate. Oh, it marinated all night long. Oh, didn't have a chance last night to get out here and do it. It was too late. Oh, Come out here this morning, got the fire started. I started out with charcoal and started throwing some oak on top of it. You can use oak, you can use hickory, you can use apple, you can use, I mean, it's just pecan, anything you want. You can, uh, any kind of hardwood that you like, you can use or mesquite or whatever, but uh, you don't have to have a smokehouse like this right here. This is just some, something I threw together, you know, years ago and, and I've always used this right here. Oh, it's like three by three and about six foot tall. It's always worked real good, you know. But oh, I've got little, if you'll look right there, those are, oh, to regulate the air, you know, and keep the temperature at the right, you know, whatever you're wanting to keep it at, so. I've got it on all four sides. Little fella, you better go on now. Anyway, I got it on all four sides and, two, well, two on the front door, so, you know, I can regulate the airflow going to the fire to keep it at the temperature that I want to keep it. And I'm thinking on this right here, you want to probably run about, I don't know, maybe 180. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Something like that, maybe 180. I done sucked in that dust, that smoke. Let me tell you, it's rough. But uh, what I'm fixing to do right now is I'm gonna, I've got some 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 uh, racks that I'm going to spread this meat out on. And then I'm going to lay them in there. I'm going to get this burnt down to, to coals. I don't want a fire blazing in this thing. I'm going to get it burnt. I'm going to let it burn down for probably another... 30 45 minutes and then i'm gonna just put them in there and close the door and watch that temperature and make sure i keep it about 180 maybe 200 something like that and uh, and just let it let it sit there and and you know dry that meat out cook that meat anyway y'all bear with me i'm gonna get the racks oh loaded and in there and then uh, i'll get the i'll turn it back on and let y'all take a look at it but she's stoking out the heat right now anyway See y'all in a little bit. Right, let's get y'all caught up. <clears throat> I got everything in there. Now, this ain't the prettiest job in the world, y'all, but I'm doing it in a hurry right now. <laughs> but what I've done is I've taken every rack tray we've got, little racks, and I've just filled it up with that meat where there's not touching. You know, I'm trying to get it as close as you can get it, and that way you can put as much in there as we can without it touching. But anyway, oh, going to try to keep that fire around 160 to 200, you know, 180 being perfect but anyway oh that's what i'm fixing to do right now i'm fixing to close the gates on it and uh see if i can't get it damper down and at the right temperature and just let it sit oh i may come back it may be lunchtime before i pull it off you know it may be a couple of two or three hours i don't know we're just gonna we're gonna play it by ear and see that's the way i do everything i just play it by ear i don't have a you know a plan or anything i really don't <clears throat> I really don't want it dried out. You know what I'm saying? I don't want it so tough that, you know, and so dry that it's that it's super hard to chew and bite off and everything. So I'm probably going to leave a little bit more moisture in it on this batch right here and just keep it in the refrigerator or, you know, you know, like I said, I can, I can, uh, I can put them in those freezer bags and, and vacuum seal it and I'll put it back in the freezer and just pull it out as I need it. But anyway, y'all bear with me. We're gonna see what it looks like in a couple hours and uh, maybe it'll turn out good. All right, y'all got a mouthful of jerky. I've already pulled it out. Still, ooh, still got enough heat in there to do another batch probably just off of the, that little bit of wood that I put in there earlier. 
about two and a half, three hours. Here it is right here. I didn't overcook it. I didn't cook it until it was hard. Oh, because I don't want to, I don't want to have to sit there and fight with it. I don't got old enough now that I don't want it super dry. I want it tender where I can, where I can, oh, you know, where I can, I can do something with it. Oh, the, the curing salt that comes with it, oh, you know, will, will take care of anything. Plus I've gotten it to like 160, 180 degrees all the way through, maybe even hotter than that. So, you know, we're going to kill anything that any kind of bad bacteria anyway that was in there. So it's still good. But what I was going to do is I was going to take this right here and put it in small vacuum seal bags and put it in the freezer. And uh, as we need it, we can just thaw a pack out and I'll uh, cut it open and, and go to town on it. But anyway, oh, it takes up a lot less room when it's dehydrated like this than it did when it was, you know, when it wasn't. So that way it's, it's, it's giving me more room in my freezer so I can restock for the uh, for next summer. Anyway, because it's getting close, y'all. Fixing to be deer season again. But anyway, it turned out really good. I wish y'all could try it. And uh, you don't have to have the seasoning from Cabela's or Bass Pro. You don't have to have a smokehouse. Uh, you can do it with a dehydrator. You can do it in the oven. Uh, you can do it with some homemade seasoning. You don't have to have all this special stuff. This is just this is just the way I did this right here to make it simple and fast and do a little YouTube video on it. Hope y'all enjoyed it and uh, I appreciate y'all.